Now let's look at some sample problems when we are solving or when we're studying the hyperbola. Like if we're given the equation y squared is equal to 6x, we are asked to determine the parts and then we try to sketch the graph. So the first thing that we do is determine what is the vertex of this parabola. And usually if there if it's not in 0, 0, it's not in the origin, there should be y minus something or x minus something in the standard form. Since this is in standard form and there's no h a k or h here, therefore we can say that the vertex is at 0, 0. And since y squared, it opens horizontally. And specifically, we can see here that this is positive. 4a is equal to 6. If we divide it by 4, a is equal to t hat, which is still positive. So therefore, we can say that this parabola opens to the right. So if we would like to try and sketch what it will look like, so that's your partition thing. Then your parabola might look something like this. There you go. Now, since A is equal to Tias, we can easily determine where our focus and directives would be. If you recall, from the vertex here, the focus is A units from the vertex, and the directives is also A units from the vertex. Now, if you recall the shape that we had previously, the focus is quote-unquote inside the parabola. So the focus would be, on this specific case, on this side, on the right side, while the directrix would be on the left side. Because remember the directrix, since it has a fixed distance from the parabola, it should not intersect the parabola in any way. So in this case, our focus would be here, and that would be a distance from the vertex. So that would be somehow here, if this is our focus, then this distance, let me remove that arrow there. Ah, no, no, let's go to move the arrow back instead of that one couple. So that distance A would be equal to 3 halves. And therefore, since we move horizontally from the vertex, then this would have the coordinates 3 halves, comma 0, making the uh, coordinates of the focus at 3 halves 0. And since so that same distance, a is equal to 3 halves, but you move to the left, therefore this point here, if we are to draw a directrix, which is usually drawn as a, let's change the variable, if we draw a line, a, usually a broken line for the directrix, and it's obviously vertical, because the parabola opens to the right, the, uh, the directrix should be vertical. And since it moved that way, this point, we move eight, we move three halves units to the left, so this point is at negative three halves comma zero, making this uh, directrix having the equation x is equal to negative three halves. Let's write it a bit more properly. Negative three halves. There you go. And now for the endpoints of the lattice rectum, we would have here. From the focus up to the endpoint, this ELR here, that has 2A, that has a length rather of 2A. And that's the same here. Once we go down here, that length is also 2A. And since A is equal to 3 halves, if we multiply 2 to 3 halves, that will be equal to 3. Therefore, 3, 3, we go 3 units up and 3 units down. Making this uh the ELRs with the following coordinates three halves comma three and three halves comma negative three. Since well you're from zero zero and you move three units up and three units down, so you just really move three. Or since this is positive and negative three, you can write it as three comma positive negative three minus. There. Now the additional parts Although, if we say we're looking for the parts, we can stop here, but the additional parts that we usually look for are, for example, are, uh, not for example, are for, uh, first, 
the length of the lattice rectum, which is the line segment from here to here, which should pass through the corpus there. So that length is 3 plus 3, which is actually 4a, that would be equal to 6. The equation of the lattice rectum, as we can see, it passes through the point 3 halves comma 0, this one. So that would be x is equal to 3 halves, since it's a vertical line segment. And the axis of symmetry, since as we can notice, the vertex is here at 0, 0, there we go. So we say that the axis of symmetry is at y equals 0. Now, what happens if, like in letter B, the given is not in standard form, but in general form? Alright, so now we have our uh, equation in 1B, which is written in standard form. Now, the first thing to do is to write this, ah, no, sorry, that's in general form. Now, the first thing to do here is to write this in standard form. So to do that, the first thing to do is to analyze which variable is actually squared. In this case, we have x. So therefore, all the x terms should remain on one side, and all the non-x terms should remain on the other side. So this 2 should remain here while this 2 will be transposed to the other side. Therefore, this becomes x squared minus 6x is equal to, it becomes positive 12y plus 51. Now, this will probably end up using the standard form x minus h squared is equal to 4a times y minus k. Since this is x squared, we expect it like this. So therefore, we need to make this a perfect squared binomial so that we can rewrite it as a square wave binomial. Hence the process of completing the square. And if we complete the square, we do the following. This is the quote-unquote middle term of the, us of the usual way we write a perfect square binomial. This is what we divide by 2 times the given variable, in this case x, and then we square that. This gets cancelled, so we're going to get negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9. Therefore, we add 9 on the left side to make it a perfect square trinomial. x squared minus 6x plus 9. And since we added 9 on the left side, we add 9 on the right side. So that would be 12y plus 51 plus 9. Now, since the right, the left side rather, is a perfect square trinomial, we can write it as a square of a binomial with this. So we can have x minus 3 squared. In the right side, we combine like terms. It's 12y plus 60. As we can see here in the general form, the coefficient of y is 1. So therefore, we need to factor up this so that the coefficient of y remains 1. So the left side remains x minus 3 squared. While on the right side, we factor out 12. And 12 y divided by 12 is y. Thus, we achieve this. And here, 60 divided by 12 would be 5. So therefore, this is now the standard form of the parabola in which now we can look for its parts. Which we can use this piece. x minus 3 squared is equal to 12 x minus 5. So first thing is we get the vertex, and now, unlike in letter A, the vertex is not in 0, 0. So the vertex now is at 3, negative 5. So you can see, it's x minus 3, so it is positive, this is y plus 5, this is negative. And now to double check, since we know that this is x squared, it opens vertically, but then we have to check if it opens upwards or downwards. So to do that, we get 4a, which is 12. Although it's a bit obvious already at 4a, just to get 4, uh, just to get a rather, that becomes 3. And this is positive. So therefore, this parabola opens upward. With that in mind, we can now try to sketch what it looks like. We would have this cartesian thing here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, four, 5. So this is where our vertex would be. Now, 
Because the parabola opens upwards, this indicates that the focus would be here, three units upward, and the vera is going to be three units downward. Since it opens upwards, the tendency is the focus will be inside the parabola, and the direct is going to be a horizontal line outside of it. So therefore, the focus will be three units above the point three negative five. So that's one, two, three. So this is that point. And this point is at three negative two. Therefore, the focus is at three negative two. Let me just remove this count. Although you can just have it stay up. Let's just have it stay because anyway, later on, we'll draw the final graph. Then this a bit more. All right. So this is where the focus is at three, two, two. So this time when we go three units down, one, two, three, this is where our uh, directrix would be. And since the parabola opens upward, the directrix should be drawn horizontally. And this is at negative 5, so that's negative 6, negative 7. This is actually the point 0, negative 8. Therefore, the equation of the directrix would be at y is equal to negative 8. And finally, for our ELRs, since our a is equal to 3, 2a would be equal to 6. So from the focus, this time, since the parabola opens upwards, the direction to the ERs will be from right to the right rather and to the left. So that's where it would be. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's somewhere here. It's a good place, but it be also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Somewhere here. So from here, that's 6. So that's 4. This is 3. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is actually the point. 8, negative 2, 8 on the axis, at the other one. Here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. So that's really negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And this is the point negative 3, negative 2. Therefore, the ELRs that we would have would be at 8, negative 2, and at 3, negative 2. We cannot do plus minus here because they are different numbers. So, yeah. uh, for the additional parts that we don't usually look for, but if it's low, for example, the uh, the length of the lattice rectum, that would be simply 4a. Because from, from the focus to the ELRs would be 6. So the length of the lattice rectum would be 4a, and that would be the original one here, which is 12. Well, the equation of the lattice rectum, as you can see, it's here, a line at y equals negative 2. Therefore, we say the lattice rectum is at y equals negative 2. Further, the equation of the axis of symmetry, let's just stop a bit. So, if you fit, I'll just, I'll just close it too. So, the axis of symmetry is this one here. So this is the axis of symmetry, but I'm going to draw the lattice rectum like this. Something. So this equation here passes through this point, which is at 3. So the equation of the axis of symmetry has x equals 3. And finally, to sketch the graph of this, although it, uh, I can just pass that like this. So this is the very, very rough sketch of the graph of the equation x squared minus 6x minus 12y minus 51 equals 0. The rest, I will leave that to you. See the EF that you'll be able to practice. Now, what if it's the other way around? What happens if we're given a, a certain conditions or the parts only and then we would have to look for the equation of the parabola in general? For example, uh, 
the direct which is at x plus 4 equals 0. Let's write it here on the other side. The direct which is at x to k. Direct which is at x plus 4 equals 0. And the vertex is at b origin. The vertex is at b origin. Now, if it's easier for some to have the directions x equals something, then you can just transpose this four, so this would become x is equal to negative four. Now, with that in mind, we analyze what's going on. This is your partition plane. We know that the vertex is here at zero zero. At x equals negative four, it's not be one, two, three, four. Ah, here. This is where the directrix is. If this is the case, then it looks like the parabola opens to the right if the directrix is here on the left side. And apart from that, apart from that, we can also see that the focus is here on the right, on the right side. But before we do that, we have to figure out what is a. And since we have a direct list, we can count how long it is from the edge to the focus. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, making A equals 4. Therefore, it also takes us 1, 2, 3, 4 to get to the focus. And since A is equal to 4, the vertex is at 0, 0. That's what actually what we need just to get the equation in the standard form. Once we get the equation in the standard form, we can then rewrite it to get the equation in the general form. With the vertex at 0, 0, the parabola is seemingly opening to the right, if the direct is on the left, at a equals 4, we can have the equation y squared is equal to 4ax. In a specific case, y squared is equal to 4 times 4 times x because a equals 4. Therefore, we have the equation in standard form y squared is equal to 16x. But since it's general form, it, we have to place it all on the left side, and then the right side is equal to zero. The right side of the equation is equal to zero. Therefore, the equation of this parabola in general form is y squared minus 16x equals zero. Here we go. So now in 2b, we have a different situation. The axis is a horizontal line. I forgot to write it. The axis is horizontal line. It's a horizontal line, rather. And the parabola passes through these three points. Now, once we have the problem passes through, more or less what we would have to do is a system of equations. Because we need to uh, replace x and y with the points on the parabola and then look for the other, uh, what do you call this? other uh, variables. Now, since we are looking for it in the general form, it would be much easier if we use the general form either ax squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0 or cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. The question is which is which. Now, let's have a rough sketch of the Cartesian phase. The axis of symmetry is a horizontal line. Remember, this is not the directrix, but the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry will contain the vertex and the focus, and it's basically, it has the same orientation as the parabola itself. So, if the parabola, ah, sorry, if the axis of symmetry is a horizontal line, therefore, the parabola should also open sidewards. Hence, we use the equation cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0 as a4. However, we let c be equal to 1. Hence, only have the equation y squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. Why is that? 1. If c is equal to 1, we will only have to solve for three variables d, e, and f. And if c is, if c is equal to 1, and we get d, e, and f as fractions, we can just get the LCT and that would make e not equal to 1. The assumption of c equals 1 makes it easier for us to do the substitution and it's allowed since if c is actually not equal to 1, we just need to do some, uh, we just need to find the LCT. 
and DEFF would be fractions in case we let C equals 1, but it's not PD. Now, what substitution are we talking about? In the point 1, 1, if it passes through this, uh, this equation, that means when we substitute 1 into y and this 1 into x, we're going to have the equation as such. That will become 1 squared plus e times 1 plus e times 1 plus f equals z. We're going to simplify that. This becomes 1 plus d e plus e plus f equals 0. For the point 1, negative 3, we do the same. We replace all the y values with negative 3 and all the x values, x variables rather, with 1. So that becomes negative 3 squared plus d e times 1 plus e times negative 3 plus f equals 0. This in turn would be 9 plus d minus d e plus f equals 0. And with the point negative 2, 0, we do the same. So this becomes 0 squared plus d times negative 2 plus e times 0 plus f equals 0. This in turn would then make that 0. So we need to write that as negative 2d plus f equals 0. Hence, what I need to do is to solve the system, oops, sorry, to solve the system 1 plus d plus e plus f equals 0. The system of equation 1 plus d plus e plus f equals 0. 9 plus d minus 3e plus f equals 0. And negative 2d plus f equals 0. Alright, so now we would need to solve this, this system of three equations. And since we already have the third equation at negative 2, negative 2d plus f equals 0, the first two equations we can get it as a system, then remove e as well. And doing that, we need to multiply this by 3. This is already negative. So we we'll have 3 plus 3d plus 3e plus 3f equals 0. Well, the other one remains the same. That's, uh, that's 9 plus d minus 3e plus f equals 0. Adding these two equations, we're going to get that's 9 plus d, which is equal to 12. 3 plus d, that's 4d, this is 0. And d plus f is equal to 4f equals 0. Now, to make this simpler, since we have a common term, we can divide everything by 4. So therefore, we're going to have that 3 plus d plus f equals 0. This equation 4 is now what we get a system with 3. We're going to have this following system. It's negative 2d plus f equals 0. The other one is d plus d plus f equals 0. Which immediately we can do subtraction. 0, that's 0 there, minus negative, minus 3 is negative 3. Negative 2d minus d is negative 3d, while f minus f is equal to 0. It is equal to 0. So solving for this, I'm going to get negative 3 is equal to 3d. Divide both sides by, it's not negative 3, but positive 3. d would be equal to negative 1. Now that we got, we get d, it's easier now for us to get f from equation 3. So, from equation 3, I'm going to get the negative 2 times negative 1 plus f equals 0. Negative 2 times negative 1, that's 2. 2 plus f equals 0. Therefore, f would be equal to negative 2. And now that f is equal to negative 2, we can just solve result for e using equation 1. Equation 1, I'm going to have 1 plus negative 1 plus e plus negative 2 because that's d which is f equals 0. 1 plus negative 1 is 0, so e plus negative 2 equals 0. Therefore, e equals 2. And since we have d, e, f, and c looks like it's just 1, therefore, the equation of this parabola in general form is y squared minus x plus 2y minus 2 equals 0. This is the equation of the parabola. 
that passes through those three points, the equation is y squared minus x plus 2y minus 2 equals 0.